In this session, we'll be talking about the parable of the Pharisee and tax collector. Right now in our readings, we are at Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. So let's start reading. He, that's Jesus, also spoke this parable to certain people who were convinced of their own righteousness and who despised all others. I'm going to stop right here for a second. This is where we get the idea of self-righteousness. The whole, the term self-righteousness, first of all, is, is really very deceptive in a sense, very unbiblical in a sense, because there is no such thing as self-righteousness apart from what you think is right. So righteousness in itself uh, what's righteous to you might not be righteous to another, which might not be righteous to God. Righteous is just being in the state of being right. What one person might say is right, another person might say is wrong. God might say, might say it's wrong, you might say it's right. What you might say is right, God might say is wrong. So God's righteousness, the righteousness of the Lord, is simply, what it means is simply Surrendering your own righteousness, surrendering your own opinions, your own uh, point of view or your own thoughts, your own feelings over, over a certain subject, you know, a certain uh, issue, and surrendering to God's righteousness, which means what does he say is right? What is right according to God? What's wrong according to God? Okay, so if you do what is right according to God, it, it, you are in... You are doing what's right. Uh, so you are righteous. Not righteous in your own eyes, but you're righteous in God's eyes. If you surrender your point of view, your feelings to God, and you go by his perception, his point of view, then your perception is his perception. So your perception of what's right is his perception of what's right, which is plainly laid out to us in the ancient scriptures. So... When it says here that there were certain people who are convinced of their own righteousness, it means that they thought that they were right, but they weren't. Okay? Some Christians believe that self righteousness, actually, a lot of Christians believe that this is talking about, this whole parable is about self righteousness, which is basically, I, I obey God more than you do. Okay? I obey God, but you don't. You know, I obey the Torah completely, but you don't. This whole parable is not about that, okay? So step back, you know, take a step back for a second. Let's assess the whole picture. Let's read on and let me, I'll, I'll explain this to you and it will, you, this will become completely clear to you. This whole parable by the end of this teaching will be crystal clear to you and you will understand it and you will apply it. You will know this parable like you've never known it before. Let's read on. Verse 10. These are the words in red, the words of the, uh, the words of the Lord himself. Two men went up into the temple to pray. Okay, they went to the right place. They're doing the right thing. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Okay. Pharisees were known as being they were like the highest, they were viewed as being the most holy people. They were supposed to be the most holy people of the day. I've read that they have, they were known for even memorizing the Bible or memorizing the scriptures. You know, they didn't have the Bible as we have it today, but the, you know, the scriptures that they had back then, the Septuagint and such, other scriptures such as that, they memorized um, so they were known as being very holy, very spiritual people. Tax collectors, on the other hand, were, being, were known as being very evil people. They were known as being thieves because they would, they would demand more tax than what was really, uh, than what they were supposed to. You know, they, they took more money than, than, they, than they were supposed to take and they pocketed that money. They were like ripoffs. They were scammers. They were thieves. Okay, they had a very low reputation, a very bad reputation in, in society. Let's read on. Verse 11. The Pharisee stood and prayed to himself like this. 
God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of men, extortionists. I mean, this is a direct jab to the tax collector, extortionists, unrighteous, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. Now, I'm going to stop here for a second. Now, this reminds me of another passage of Scripture that Jesus talks about in the tax collector saying, you know, I, he was talking, excuse me, about the uh, Pharisees. Jesus said, you know, you Pharisees, you tithe and you do all this stuff, but you neglect the weightier matters of the law, of the Torah. You do all these, uh, these superficial things, but you neglect the real meat of it all. He said that you should do the, you know, the superficial things, but you should not neglect the greater, meatier, th uh, meatier things of the law. Make sure you're in line when it comes to the most important commandments first and the most important precepts that, that are taught. And, uh, and so this is what basically the, this, this uh, Pharisee um, was suffering from. He was very shallow. He looked at things from a very shallow, uh, just a surface point of view. He missed it on the, you know, in the lines of humility, of, you know, being gracious to other people, loving other people in that sense of even though someone does wrong, even though someone speaks against you, even though someone does stuff against you, you walk in grace. You don't hold a grudge against them. You don't exalt yourself over, over an enemy or over an evil person in that sense. Um, you are, uh, you know, you walk in humility. And that's basically what it says in the uh, in the Tanakh, you know, in the so-called Old Testament. What is it? What is, you know, what is required of man, you know, to do justly, which means to obey the Torah, uh, to walk humbly before God, you know, to love mercy. So you need to do all of them. Don't think that you can just neglect one or mess up on one and you're okay. No, you're not okay. You need to do all of them. Okay. So that's where the Pharisee missed it. Let's read on. Verse 13. But the tax collector, standing far away, wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, so he inflicted pain upon himself, saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I'm going to stop here for a second again. This tax collector showed humility. And he also showed signs of repentance because he acknowledged that what he did was wrong. That's why he stood far off. That's why he beat himself. And you know, today in this age, we're, we're, we're like groomed for comfort. You know, you feel good and whatever whatever's peaceful and, and, and fluffy and feel good and comfortable, that's what you go for. This tax collector beat himself. Okay, in the old day, and in, in many times, you know, when uh, Jesus was talking to, him, he was talking about sackcloth and ashes, or, you know, in the old days they would do sackcloth and ashes. They would wear sackcloth and sit in ashes. Why? Sackcloth was like the worst, most uncomfortable thing to wear. That's that's uh, I understand that's uh, pretty much like burlap. That's wearing burlap. That's super rough and coarse. Um, clothes, okay? <laughs> Try putting on a burlap, uh, you know, burlap uh, pants and burlap uh, shirt, okay? Burlap jacket. It ain't going to be, uh, you know, a burlap, uh, you know, burlap underwear or something like that. It ain't going to be, <laughs> it ain't going to be comfortable at all, okay? It ain't. It is going to be very, very uncomfortable. Why did they do that? Because that was how they humbled themselves. That's how they afflicted themselves. In fact, the word humble in the Hebrew comes from the same root where it, it means afflicted. So God gives grace to those who are afflicted, who have, you know, those who are afflicted, those who are humble. But he opposes the proud. It says that over and over and over again. Those who are full of pride, God, God opposes it. God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, opposes it, opposes it very, very strongly. But to the afflicted, to the humble, to those who are very humble, he gives grace. Let's read on. Verse 14, I tell you, 
This man, that's the tax collector who humbled himself, went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So what is Jesus saying here? What's he teaching here? He is just trying to realign these people's theology. You know, they, they are shallow in the Torah. Where the Torah speaks of the whole gist of the Torah is humility. You know, being humble, being obedient, you know, grace, be, being gracious to other people. Not, you know, how it says in uh, Exodus chapter 23, uh, Leviticus chapter 19, not holding a grudge, loving your enemies. That's the Torah. And you have to love, you get, I mean, you got to be humble in order to love your enemies, those who are against you. There's a lot of people today that preach love, but they do not love those who are against them. They hate the ones that are against them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what a wonderful story this is. We got a Pharisee who is just doing, you know, um, the shallow things. He's just, he's just going through the motion, but he doesn't have the spirit or the heart of the Torah in him. Whereas you get the tax collector who humbled himself, and he's got the repentance, and he's got the humility that the Torah so is, you know, the Torah rides on humility, rides on repentance. That's what it's, that's what it's all about. You know, when the prophets of old came through, they always preached repentance. Even Jesus himself, the first thing he said was repent. The last thing he said in the book of Revelation to his church was repent. Okay? The first thing the, the apostles preached was repentance. In the book of Acts, they preached repentance. God commands everywhere, everyone everywhere, every man everywhere to repent. So the, the, the meat or the, what should I say, the heart of the Torah is repentance Humility, obedience. Repentance, humility, obedience. Never forget it. And as you go, may God grant you the strength to be humble, the strength to obey, the strength and the ability to repent. In the name of Yeshua, amen.